Hello guys, happy Monday. This is my third time trying to record this video. And if it does not work, I'm going to be very upset. So today I wanted to talk about poetry and specifics Edgar Allan Poe. I have this book, Edgar Allan Poe, Complete Tales and Poems. And I'm going to read you a couple of the poems and give you background knowledge on them first. I'm going to be reading like the inside slip of the cover of this book. In a career that spans slightly more than two decades, Edgar Allan Poe pioneered the short story as a literary form, perfected the tale of psychological horror, launched the detective fiction genre, and helped to revolutionize modern poetics. The full body of Poe's imaginative work encompasses mystery tales, horror stories, satires, fables, fantasies, science fiction, dramas, and verse. Edgar Allan Poe Complete Tales and Poems features all of Poe's fiction and poetry. It includes The Telltale Heart, The Black Cat, and other stories of madness and mania, The Revenge Classic, The Cask of Amontillado, and The Hot Frog, The Gothic Chillers, The Fall of the House of Usher, and The Mask of the Red Death, The Murders in the Rue Morgue, The Mystery of Marie Roget, and The Purloined Letter, all featuring Detective C. Auguste Dupin, the full-length novel The Narrative of Arthur Gordon, Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket, and 60 other stories. This book also includes more than 60 works of poetry, among them such literary landmarks as The Raven, The Bells, Inabal Lee, The Haunted Palace, and The Conqueror Worm. The heroes, heroines, demons, and dreamers who populate these poems represent some of the most memorable and imaginatively evoked creations in the English language. In Poe's mournful and meditative work, beauty is eternal, existence is but a fleeting dream, and love acknowledges no limits, not even the grave. And Grell and Poe, Complete Tales and Poems, is the ultimate tribute to his creative genius. And now I'm going to give you a little bit of background on him. That's just kind of what is featured in the book. Um, because some people just think he was like just a creep, but um, he kind of had a bad child. So I'm going to read just a little bit of this because it's a lot, but it's like, it's like a few pages long. Okay. Self-destructive, melancholic, and usually dressed in black, Edgar Allan Poe, 1809 to 1849, was the rock star of American literature in the 1830s and 1840s. While most writers of his time strove for the appearance of middle-class respectability, Poe was touched by scandal from his earliest days until death the circumstances of which remain unresolved. Sadly, the controversial details of his life, which were made to appear even more scandalous by the publication of an unfavorable obituary written by a former friend and executor of his estate, Rufus Griswold, tarnished his reputation as a writer for more than half a century after his death. The rediscovery of Poe's work in the first half of the 20th century and the establishment of his importance as a critical figure and development of a uniquely American form of literature have revealed the important influences his work has exerted on both contemporary literature and culture. The popular view of Poe after his death was that of the son of actor Prince who disgraced himself as a gambler and drinker at both West Point and in the University of Virginia, who later became addicted to laudanum. People remembered that he had a huge number of women fans who wrote to him, tried to meet him, and praised him in poetry and in letters and newspapers, and they recalled that he had married his 13-year-old cousin, Virginia Clem, when he was a man of 27. What those who scorned Poe in the half century or more following his death forgot that he was a prolific writer and perceptive critic who published more than 350 short stories, poems, essays, and critical articles, as well as a novel, the narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym, and the drama Politician under his own name, in addition to numerous anonymous writings. And that's all I'm going to read about him. And now I'm going to read my favorite, favorite poem by him called Dreams. Oh, that my young life were a lasting dream, my spirit not awakening till the beam of an eternity should bring the morrow. Yes, though that dream were of hopeless sorrow, t'were better than the cold reality of waking life to him whose heart must be and hath been still upon the lovely earth a chaos of deep passion from his birth. But should it be that dream eternally, continuing as dreams have been to me, in my young boyhood, should it thus begin, 
T'were folly still to hope for a higher hum. For I have reveled when the sun was bright, I the summer sky in dreams of living light, And loveliness have left my very heart, In climes of my imagining apart. From mine own home with beings that have been, Of mine own thought, what more could I have seen? T'was once, and only once, and the wild hour, From my remembrance shall not pass some power, or spell had me bound, t'was the chilly wind, Came o'er me in the night, and left behind, Its image on my spirit, or the moon, Shone on my slumbers in her lofty noon, Too coldly, or the stars, however it was, That dream was as the night wind, let it pass. I have been happy, though, but in a dream, I have been happy, and I love the theme, Dreams in their vivid coloring of life, as in that fleeting, shadowy, misty strife of semblance with reality which brings to the delirious eye more lovely things of paradise and love and all our own than young hope in his sunniest hour hath known. Now, I know he uses a bunch of vague words, but if you know about him, he had a really rough childhood. And so basically, that poem is about... um his childhood and how he was like he hated the world because nothing could be happy and um how he was only happy in his dreams and I want to read one more poem and I don't think there's enough time for a tale because these are kind of long I want to read Annabelle Lee because these are probably my two favorite poems from him and um my favorite tale would probably have to be Probably would have to be the Telltale Heart. I really liked that uh, story. It was kind of creepy, but I really liked it. I read a couple others, but um, I think that's the one I like the best because I have barely made a dent in this book. But um, okay, this is Annabelle Lee. It was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. And this maiden she lived with no other thought to than to love and be loved by me. She was a child and I was a child in this kingdom by the sea. But we loved with a love that was more than love, I and my Annabelle Lee, with a love that winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me. And this was the reason that long ago in this kingdom by the sea, a wind blew out of a cloud by night chilling my Annabelle Lee so that her high-born kinsmen came and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulchre in this kingdom by the sea. The angels, not half so happy in heaven, went envying her and me. Yes, that was the reason, as all men know, in this kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of the cloud chilling and killing my Annabelle Lee. But our love, it was stronger by far than the love of those who were older than we, of many far wiser than we, and neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. For the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabelle Lee, and the stars never rise but I see the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. And so all the night tide I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride in her sepulchre by the sea, in her tomb by the side of the sea. So that one was about his wife and how even though she died he would always still love her and that he believed that they always always would go on together i think most people think that poe was really creepy and that he had like a horrible nasty mind but i think i think he was a bit disturbed because there are other things i know about him that i really not want to say on camera because it's really gross but I think that sometimes something clicked in his brain and that he was in the right place and I really do think that his wife um who was his cousin but I really do think that he loved her so much I don't know if she loved him back but I think he was really in love with her and that that really um helped him 
be like sane for a little bit and i think that he really um when he wrote like these poems some of them are just so beautiful that he um he just i feel like he put his real like heart into it like i think it's it's beautiful and um I really, I really love Edgar Allan Poe. I love his work. I think that some of his stories are a bit creepy. Um, the stories that I've read so far in this book, which is only three of them, I know, I know, are The Devil in the Belfry. Um, that one is kind of weird and it didn't really make much sense. I understood what it meant, but, um, or what he was trying to say. I don't know if there's a moral to that story, um, if not I didn't get it, but um, uh, his work is kind of hard to comprehend for me, especially because um, of the language used during that time. Um, I also read Never Bet the Devil Your Head. This one says a tale with the moral, and I learned to never bet the devil my head. Um, and last but not least, The Telltale Heart. And that story, I don't really know what the moral of that one is because obviously you shouldn't kill people, but I don't know. I really did enjoy that one. Um, oh, about the author. Oh, it tells me about a girl and Poe in the back of this book. Well, he died two years after his wife died, so um, I think he died of a broken heart. Um, tell me what you guys think about Edgar Allan Poe. Tell me what uh, your guys' favorite poet is. I would really like to know. I'm so interested to hear what you guys have to say. Um, it was great getting to talk to you about something that was like not about church and just something that I enjoy. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. I will see you soon. Bye.